brother. My lover. People just don't understand our bond. It's not wrong to lay with your brother. It's ecstasy. Thank you for that. Well, given that I'm working on my big swashbuckling adventure, I figured I'd talk about another Steam game to tide us over. I Am Caligula is an RPG Maker game brought to us by Seraphim Creations. Their Steam library consists of this game and a spin off visual novel that we'll also be taking a look at later. So, I originally wasn't going to talk about the developer of this game, I was just going to let his work stand on its own, but. It's kind of unavoidable when his games are actually infected by the outside influence of them. However, we'll burn that bridge when we get to it. I Am Caligula is an RPG visual novel game designed to tell the story of Caligula. Kind of a video game adaptation of that old 70s movie but without the lawnmower decapitation machine. Honestly, if there was a game where you played as Caligula riding on top of that, just chopping off heads as you went, that would be on my top 10 games of all time list. Sadly, this isn't a thing in the game, so... One of the main focuses of this game is Caligula's incestuous relationship with his sister Drusilla. From what I understand from reading the store page description, I Am Caligula is a collection of smaller stories put into one game, but I could be wrong on that one. The first thing that I noticed about this game was that it has default RPG Maker sounds, which isn't the biggest crime on the planet, but I have to admit the default sounds are really harsh on the ears and I've always hated them. One thing you might also notice is that there's original artwork for this game. Apparently, the developer Leto, in a blog post from 2014, boasts that he achieved this with less than $1,000 budget from Kickstarter backers. He also claims to have done this within five years. Most RPG Maker projects take approximately three months to finish. From my experience, anyway. I actually find the artwork to be quite charming in the same vein as Furry Tales. In fact, I even consider this to be a bit of a step up from that, because the shading is a lot better. The Tiberius was dead to begin with. I don't know if I pronounced Tiberius right. The story begins with the passing of the previous Roman Emperor, making Caligula the new Emperor. From this point onward, you are Emperor of the Roman Empire. Go nuts! Yeah, literally in this case. My brother. My lover. People just don't understand our bond. Yeah, I don't because it's not even it's been not properly wrong established. It's not to lay with your brother. It's ecstasy. Oh, they're on ecstasy, that explains it. So for the majority of this game, there's two sections that are worth bothering with. The Forum, and the Palace. I personally don't know why the rest of the game even exists, because if this thing was a lot more linear, it would actually be a lot better. The open world is a sprawling, confusing mess that just kind of annoys me. I think I found a side quest or two, but... I didn't want to do any of them because they're all on the level of go into the sewer and look for a Roman coin and I'll give you money. Yeah, because emperors of Rome used to wade through sewage looking for gold coins for chump change rewards. Makes sense. I think Leto kind of misunderstood the point in an open world in an RPG because he has all these elements that I feel like they're there out of obligation, like currency and item shops none of which you need to get through the game. If you buy a weapon, you are going to use it once, if you're lucky. So, that's pointless. But also, the town is constantly the same. Characters don't change no matter what happens in the story. It might have been cool 
if you start off talking to characters and they have a lot of respect for you and are hopeful, but then by the end of the game, characters are really, really resentful towards you because of what you did. That people who have died had loved ones who you can encounter in the world who give you shit for getting them killed. But there's nothing like that. The world just keeps on keeping on no matter what. It's the same shit from start to finish. So again, redundant. There's also other places that you can go in the game, but outside this one place in Germany, which is part of the story, I didn't bother going to any of the others because they're just inconsequential. I do kind of appreciate that they're there and that such a big map was made. I can't call it lazy, but it really does nothing for me and it just feels like a load of fluff added to the game, making it difficult to navigate. Could they've just not made it so that you uh, went back to bed after that one scene? I don't feel like I've actually accomplished anything. It's the fucking dying room! Fuck off. So it's around this point that Caligula just brings a horse into the Senate. Of course, the previous scene, he was really normal. It really is just out of nowhere. I get that the writer might have wanted him to do something erratic to establish that Caligula is crazy, but it's just so dichotomous that it just feels like a random thing thrown in there. Excuse me, what am I doing? Oh, that's nice, but I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm lost. Can someone help me? I also found the writing to be incredibly juvenile in this game. Just the way the dialogue works, where Caligula is jeering at them like a ten-year-old. I don't know, I would say it's fair enough that he's an inbred nut job, and that would explain it, but... The retorts of the Roman senators and other NPCs are on par with Caligula's childish language, which makes it feel like it's more of the writer's limitations than the characters. Salvia was found. Oh good, I, I couldn't find her anywhere. Oh cool, I can steal all these guys' shit. Oh, he's copied and pasted the same chest like 50 times. From the looks of it. Meaning there's ten denarii in each one. Ha 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 ha. Brilliant. I'm just gonna steal all these guys' wages. That's how a proper emperor does it. Oh, that had five denarii in it. Oh. Yeah, proper emperors pay their workers and then sneak into their houses and steal all the payback, so they've technically been paid, but they haven't got the money. I found the scoring to also be really strange. Like, this dungeon has an epic rock anthem playing in it, despite nothing really going on down here. I legitimately don't understand, and I wonder if any thought went into the implementation of the music at all. From what I can tell, it's just the stock RPG Maker tracks, minus one or two tracks that they might have gotten for free online. And I wouldn't really complain about this if it was used properly. What's with the music? It's just so inappropriate. It's just like, oh my god, get out of the way or I'll kill you. It's sad that I've played weird erotica games that are free, that have this same music but implemented much better than this. It's a paddle. It feels so nice to be clean. I find it so peaceful here. I just love spending the day at the public baths. I've peed three times in this water. If only you were my sister. What? Anyway, no time for erotica now. We've got panty hats to contend with. By the way, this comes up randomly just before a dream sequence that has nothing to do with it. And then you end up in this... <sighs> this fucking nightmare segment! Okay, so this horse bastard comes in and is all like... This is I, Instatartus, your brother, your lover.
So this batshit insanity happens, which would be cool if it wasn't so damn difficult to navigate. Every option seems to send you back to the start and it feels like trial and error. It's beyond tedious and it took me what felt like an eternity to get through. Also, none of it is referenced later on except for the dream itself which kinda comes back. But that's about it. I mean, I don't know, it could have impacted on the plot a bit more than, well, 0%. You find these objects? You'd think maybe they'd trigger memories, or give Gaius Caligula a chance to comment on his views of his surroundings. And whilst they do kind of do that, it's so insignificant that it might as well not be there to begin with. Oh wow. Something is not what you think. Huh, you know, this strange oblivion realm is just a little bit unusual. As someone who's worked with RPG Maker before, I noticed a few errors here. Like, these bones are clearly meant to be scattered along the ground, but are seemingly embedded into the wall for some reason. They aren't really meant for wall decor. It honestly reminds me of Evlav's studio. There's also a Final Fantasy-esque random battle system, and it's really annoying. I would have preferred it if it triggered when you touched the enemies, but no. It comes from nowhere. I know that RPG Maker kind of has this as a staple, but it's really not cool. At best it's annoying, and at worst it's progress destroying. If this happens to you, and you haven't saved for an hour, then you're basically fucked. Anyway, you know that you're making progress because the screen turns black and white, and then you finally get to a scene where you escape the nightmare, go back to the real world, and it's never brought up again. Well, you know, except for that sequence at the end I mentioned earlier. So, oh, what, does that mean the game's gonna close? So, it ends with this scene where Caligula is going to die from illness, but he manages to pull through. Due to the narrative being so badly implemented, I legit thought that this was gonna be some sort of flashback as part of the dream. I had a similar problem with another one of Leto's games known as Drusilla's Dreams, in which case I had no idea what the shit was going on. As far as I could tell, it was sort of implied that the decision of running a bath or getting dressed alternated the entire universe from one what-if scenario to another. This does explain why his dream was so fucked up, but I would have liked a few scenes in the dream instead of it just being a big mess. Like, maybe some flashbacks to some character-defining moments? It's just, all we get is this trippy bullshit that we had to navigate to get here. I don't feel like I've learned anything about Caligula as a character. I don't feel like the world's gotten bigger because of it. I just feel like I've had my time wasted. Of course none of it fucking matters because the horse is in the way! I am fairly certain that this is a glitch because I legitimately don't know why it would be in this scene. So my guess is that the game fucked up? Unless this is some sort of artsy statement. I don't know, I fucking hate it either way, I know that much. I swear to Christ, Slato takes the fucking piss with these ellipses. A good wife? I will be the best wife. And we shall rule the world. Dun dun dun! Yeah, that's another point I'd like to make. The acting in this... Uh... They call me insane! I'm just having fun! <laughs> it's kind of like something you'd hear in a porno. Or a bad cartoon. How does it feel, Little Boots? You are the emperor of the world. That kind of quality, so that's good. Oh wait, isn't there a palace-like temple? I think that's where I need to go to get married in it. I don't know. I've had a break and I already want to quit. There we go, right. Excuse me, is this where I get married? Another thing that continues to persist is the lack of direction. Like, in the previous cutscene, the game said something about getting married, and I thought that I needed to go to the temple or some shit to get married, as the next bit in the story. Turns out, no. Turns out, 
I'm going to the Senate because the marriage happened off screen. Normally, previous cutscenes establish what you're doing next. They don't just leave you guessing. Oh, okay. I guess that's all you needed to do in ancient Rome. Just say we're married and it was true. So what the fuck am I doing now? If I'm not getting married, what the shit? Excuse me, what am I doing? I'm keeping the accounts in order, my emperor, though it seems some money is missing. How much money? Well... Don't just shrug that question off. Where's my money, you bitch? I'm stealing this money. You better find that stolen money. Anyway, Caligula goes to war on a whim with the German tribes up north. And it... <laughs> goes about as well as you'd imagine. This is when we get a taste of the battle mode, where you get to play as Caligula, Drusilla, Macro, and Luca, Drusilla's slave. I have no idea why Drusilla and Luca were brought on this campaign. One of them literally wields a stick as her weapon. Drusilla is also able to use a healing kiss, which she's able to fix herself with. And yes, you heard that right. Her kissing boo-boos makes them go away. She has magic lips. Just like they had in real ancient Rome. Luca is the character who exists the least out of these three, and the only thing that she provides is really inappropriate comic relief. Like, whenever Caligula murders someone, she asks a dumb childish question about dessert or something. Oh, I'm sorry, desert. Yeah, it's about as funny as it sounds. Oh, and it also has this awful music stinger. Just to remind you, that it's not funny. Will there be desert? Desert? Will there be desert? So then we devolve into the madness of Caligula, where we just do a bunch of random things. There's nothing really connecting any of this shit, so it's just a bunch of random events happening. I did come up with a rule that you always need to go to the Senate, but it backfired to the point that even the NPCs were confused, as their best guess was to go to the Senate even knowing that it's not where I need to be. So anyway, Drusilla kicks the bucket and Caligula declares himself a god. Seems a reasonable leap of logic. Then we go back to the- Anyway, this one's a bit better than the last one because it turns into some weird Persona-esque trip where you encounter some of your lost and betrayed friends. Which admittedly is kinda cool, it gives it a sort of River of the Dead vibe from Metal Gear. Though he says that Luca is gone? I don't know when that happened. Like, did she die? Did she kill herself? Was she killed? Couldn't she serve Caligula or somebody else in the family? Fucked if I know. I was going to look it up, but she isn't a real person, so I can't even guess her fate based on her historical counterpart. Some people think she's named after the town of Luca. I I've actually been there. There's a tower with a tree growing out of it. I wish I could throw myself off. Anyway, it cuts to years later. By the way, it doesn't bother to tell you that it's years later, you've just got to guess. When Caligula goes on a walk with his son, Drusilla who we never get to know because you're immediately killed. Oh wait, it is his daughter. I swear to god it looks like a boy. Anyway, you die. That's the end. What a wonderfully paced story it was. So yeah, I'm a Caligula is a wonderful mess of a story which has some decent assets going for it, but does little with them. None of the characters are probably established or fleshed out, there's no relationships to speak of, and things just sort of happen for no reason. I get that it's to reflect the erratic nature of a rather crazy person, but you still have to tell a coherent story, which this just isn't. A fair few critics said that it has a lot of inaccuracies when compared to the actual history and stuff, both minor and major, so you couldn't even say that it's a good historical account. I don't mind that being the case, especially given that this is supposed to explore Caligula as a character, but it fails on that front as well. I have no idea what the game even wants me to feel. Am I supposed to hate Caligula? Am I supposed to feel sympathy for him? 
It's an odd question. I appreciate that. However, no real tone is set in this mess. This just happens and then there's no weight to what should be pretty heavy moments. If you compare this to something like Downfall, it's quite clear what you're meant to be feeling, whether it's for the characters or even just for the events as a whole. They make Hitler into an interesting character to view, and some might even sympathise with him on some level. Here, they try to do something similar, but it just falls flat because there just isn't enough dedication to the narrative and story. Sadly, this is literally the only Caligula-themed game in existence, at least the only one with a strong narrative focus. I feel like it could be good with some sort of overhaul, but it'd have to be a pretty damn good overhaul in order to fix this mess. are all for sale. Just five gold coins. <laughs> <laughs>